And now for McAllen City Hall, a meeting of the McAllen City Commission. Good morning, Neil. Good morning. Good afternoon and welcome to the Mark Allen City Commission meeting for April 12, 2021. If you please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invitation by Mayor Pro Tem, Veronica Whitaker. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father in heaven, we stand before you today in our opponent presence to ask that you grant us strength as we make decisions for our community. We want you to give us the strength to power through all of the tasks today, whether little or big. It is by your will that we will make decisions for all as strong leaders of McAllen. We thank you, God, for the power to be right by our constituents and also that this commission was recognized by the state statewide because you gave us the will to give back to our community. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we have a couple proclamations uh, today. And the first one is the uh, Mayor's Monarch Pledge and for the Butterflies. Colleen, you have your people up here? And that's two of them. I should have worn my shirt. Oh. <laughs> and this is this is so important today to recognize this with the freeze. Um, I lost my butterfly garden. And so I don't know when we're trying to replant it now, but um, anyways, uh, so we need to make sure we protect those. What a, what a great um, event this is. If you could, please let me uh, read your proclamation. Whereas the monarch butterfly is one of the most popular and iconic species in North America, whose incredible multi-generational migration has captured the Im Im imagination of millions of Americans. I don't know if it has it in here, but how do you think they fly from Canada to Mexico? What do you... They, they got to be really fast, right? Or, a lot of does anybody planning. know? <laughs> they they get up in the jet stream. They literally do. They get up in the jet stream, and the jet stream blows them down here, and they come down to eat in in my backyard and other places and um, do that. But that's that's really fascinating how they actually travel thousands of miles. Whereas the North American monarch was adopted as the official state insect by the Texas legislature in 1995. And whereas 20 years ago, more than 1 billion monarch butterflies migrated to Mexico, but that population has dwindled by more than 80% in the past two decades. And whereas monarch scientists attribute the decline to degradation and loss of summer breeding habitat in the United States and loss of winter habitat in Mexico. And whereas we, the citizens of Mac Island, are concerned about the monarch butterfly population and can make a difference by simple changes in landscaping and educating citizens about how and where to grow native milkweed and other native, native habitat that can benefit all pollinators. And whereas on behalf of the people of McAllen, who have already joined me in creating healthy habitat for those magnificent butterflies, I'm honored to be the first mayor in the lower River Grand Valley of Texas to pledge to achieve leadership circle status and lead the way by signing the National Wildlife Federation Mayor's Monarch Ple Pledge. And I encourage other city officials across our great region to take a stand with me so that the monarch butterfly will once again flourish across our continent. And now, therefore, uh, Jim Daring, Mayor of City of McAllen, by the virtue of authority of me, do hereby proclaim April 12, 2021, as Mayor's Monarch Pledge Day. Thank, Thank you. you so I'm not good at reading through a mask here, but thank you, Mayor Darling, for leading the way, like he's already said, of the Lower Rio Grande Valley. Uh, banking an impactful conservation for the iconic mo monarch butterfly. Today, along with McAllen Parks and Recreation, the McAllen Independent School District, 
the Texas Department of Transportation, and the National Wildlife Federation, Quinta Mazatlan, and the Center for Urban Ecology look forward to creating the habitats that the mayor spoke about for raising awareness of the plight of monarch butterfly. And we are already working to accomplish this, um, that the actions needed to, uh, to be the first leadership circle city of the monarch's mayor pledge in the valley by working to create uh, butterfly gardens with MISD elementary schools. We're creating roadside monarch habitats and uh, plant the native hosts and nectar plants these butterflies need to continue their magnificent migration for the generations of the people and butterflies to come. So we encourage you to all get out and plant a um, monarch butterfly habitat and encourage these butterflies to keep making this migration. Thank you very much. Our next proclamation is Fair Housing Month with Ms. Elva Cerda, and the proclamation will be read by Omar Quintanilla. It gives me great pleasure to give the following proclamation. Whereas Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familiar status, and national origin. Whereas the state of Texas additionally prohibits discrimination because of sexual orientation, marital status, ancestry, source of income, disability, medical condition, and age and whereas adequate housing is a basic need and right of all people. Whereas the city encourages and supports fair housing practices and heightened public awareness, the city of McCown pledges its commitment to improve housing options and celebrates the value of harmonious and diverse communities by promoting fair housing law. And now, therefore, I, Omar Quintanilla, City Commissioner of the City of McAllen, Texas, by the virtue and authority vested in me and on behalf of the Mayor and City Commission, do hereby proclaim the month of April as Fair Housing Month. Congratulations. I wanted to thank you all, thank the Commission for all their support. Uh, my name is Elba Cerda, and I've been a member of both boards. I'm honored to have been. We have our executive director, Bobby Calvia, with the Affordable Homes of South Texas, and Rudy Ramirez with the McAllen Housing Authority. And luckily, several of our board members that serve us and some of our staff. So thank you so much. At this time, though, we also wanted to take a moment to have Mayor Jim Darling join us down here for a very, very short presentation. <laughs> Are you talking about me, sure? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much you all know, but Mayor Darling has been a hum huge advocate for the mission of affordable housing in our city. Always, I, was, I worked with him on affordable homes for at least 20 years, and he did a lot of our work for us at that time, legal work, until he got too busy. And then later on, I was lucky to be appointed to the Housing Authority, as he also appointed Lorena, who served on both boards. And again, he's been a, a very, very, very important supporter of what we do in McAllen to serve the community with affordable quality homes. So he, we're gonna give him two gifts. One of them is a bat uh -huh. signed by both boards and some staff members. And it reads, thank you, Mayor Jim Darling, for being a home run hitter for affordable housing uh -huh. on behalf of Affordable Homes of South Texas and the McAllen Housing Authority. 
And hopefully you won't hit us with it. But... <laughs> Thank you. And Thank you. Ronnie has probably something else for you that you can enjoy. Yeah, okay. This is also an appreciation what you did for the McAllen Housing Authority. We need legal advice. We need everything. The city always supports us. You know, they're your all's attorney, and Jim has always been there for us. So we just wanted a little gift from the uh, McAllen Housing Authority and from Ashley. Oh, both wow. Us, for both of us. Well, thank you. Thank you, Can you say something? Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, thank you, and it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's always been a pleasure working with you guys. And so we have a lot of great volunteers. It makes my job look easy. Mm -hmm. And so what you guys have done through, and ladies and gentlemen have done through the years, for our people, uh, put people in houses that uh, never would afford a home and now could afford it. And watching those kids grow up in their own house is just so special. So thanks for all you've done. Appreciate it. Thank you're not you going anywhere, though. That doesn't mean yeah. that we're not going to be calling you. Right? Okay, well, I'll still be around. You got we're my all number. have to take that one. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Thank okay. Hey, Randy. How you doing? Thank you. How are you, ma'am? Come on, vamos. Gracias, gracias. Appreciate it. Thanks. Are you doing a proclamation? No. Ask, ask over there. Are you doing the reading of? I know you're doing a proclamation. I don't know how are you. That's it. I think the mayor has one. No, there's nothing here either. There's one on your desk. There's one on your desk. Right. There's one on your desk. Yeah, no, no. It's private. It's not my turn. On me either. Well, because he's three. Oh. Oh, he has it in his hand? He has it in his hand. Oh, it's the mayor. Boy, it's the mayor. You ever do it again? No, because he's got it in his hand. Okay. Sorry about that. And I want to especially thank Omar Quintanilla. We've been on the Amigos uh, Valley Board for how many years now? He was on as a banker, and then when I got on, and then he could, uh, I got real busy, and so he took my place as, as my alternate and spent every meeting for the last <laughs> two and a half years. But uh, really would appreciate what you've done in housing, Omar. You did a great job. Okay, our next one is, um, is a proclamation. I thought I, I was on a Zoom call the other day. I hate Zoom things. And, and uh, we had the Great American Cleanup and all these other things, and Chris Lass and her board at the uh, Keep McAllen Beautiful. I realize how many hours they put in as a board. I mean, I've been on a lot of boards, but I haven't been um, as active, I think, in any one board as a McAllen, uh, Keep McAllen Beautiful board is on theirs, not only in governance, but out there and in, in actually you know, where the rubber meets the road and participating in all the functions. And so I thought it was appropriate to recognize the board for all the great work they do in keeping our city uh, beautiful. So if you will. I put my glasses on. <laughs> this is the state of Texas and county of Hidalgo and city of McAllen. Whereas Cape McAllen Beautiful has been a city of McAllen beautification advisory board since 1976. Who served on this? Anybody in the service? No, okay. And, it, and it's, I started in 78, so it could be possible. All right, there we go. And is an affiliate of Keep uh, Texas Beautiful and Keep America Beautiful. And whereas the Keep McAllen Beautiful Advisory Board of Directors is comprised of dedicated community professionals and retirees who serve selflessly, donated over 3,000 hours of time within the past five years alone to help make McAllen a stronger, more vibrant community. And whereas our efforts have spawned projects such as the Great American Cleanup, Project Clean Neighborhoods, Litter and Bulky Waste Cleanups, the Arbor Day Celebration, Tree Plantings, 
paint Mac Allen beautiful. And you know, all those stand pipes you see are because Mac keep Mac Allen beautiful. It's really been a, a tremendous attribute to the city. Uh, irrigation pipe project and various other educational events and activities. And whereas Keep Mac Allen Beautiful is a two-time recipient of the Keep Texas Beautiful Governor's Community Achievement Award and numerous other accolades. And whereas Keep Mac Allen Beautiful Board of Directors works with businesses, schools, and other organizations to collaboratively make a beautiful difference in our community. And whereas the, through the Keep Mac Allen Beautiful Board of Directors commitment, their projects and efforts have helped enhance and beautify the community where we live, work, and play. Now, therefore, I, Jim Darling, Mayor of City of McAllen, Texas, by the virtue of the authority vested in me on behalf of the McAllen City Commissioners, do hereby proclaim April 12, 2021, as Keep McAllen Beautiful Board of Directors Day. Congratulations. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. You can't see the smile behind my mask, so we're smiling from ear to ear. This really means a lot to us. Thank you so much, Mayor. And on behalf of the Board of Directors, we have several of our members here from the Board of Directors. We really appreciate your support and all your hardworking efforts that you yourself gave to keep McAllen beautiful through the Great American Cleanup and other projects. And we also appreciate all the help from all the volunteers in the community. And the Board of Directors is nothing but strong and supportive of our organization, and that's what we need to move it forward. And so I really thank you on behalf of myself and the board for this recognition. Thank you so well much. Deserved. Thank you. Well, I remember uh, I think it was two years ago when we had the Great American Cleanup and the state was down there and I forget how many volunteers they had, 1,200? Yeah, it was like 15 or 1,800. 15 or 1,800 and the state people said, in San Antonio, we're lucky we get 200. Yeah. I mean, that really says a lot. And so they do a fantastic job and um, go out and do it. It's a lot of fun. I learned one lesson too. Uh, I used to ask the kids, what's the most interesting thing you picked up today? And I quit asking that question. <laughs> uh, you want to do that anymore. But so appreciate all you do and your board. You're fantastic job and you're really the um, the hidden heroes right because the city gets a lot of the accolades but it's really the board of directors that carry it out and make it possible thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. no we got one more we got one more JB JB we got one more Mayor, if you would stay down there, uh, I'd like to invite the entire city commission uh, down here for my first ever proclamation. Oh, oh wow. wow. First ever. That'd be that big bonus for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I invite the assistant city managers to come up. So, this is the first ever uh, proclamation that I've ever read, uh, I believe. And so, I'm going to read it. It's a little lengthy because it's about the city commissioner, so there's a lot to talk about, obviously. And so, I'm going to preface it by saying that uh, uh, all of the assistant city managers, many of the department heads of the city of McAllen, as well as myself, are members of the Texas City Managers Association. I've been a member for 21 years. Uh, it's a great organization that provides amazing training. And it, it also provides recognition to what I believe are uh, such important aspects of everything that local government does. And so on Friday, they officially, the Texas City Manager Association Board, uh, voted and selected the McAllen City Commission as the City Council of the Year for the State of Texas. And so this is a big deal, folks. This is a really, really big deal. I mean, winning it any year, if you think about the fact that there's 1,200 cities in the state of Texas, winning it any year is a huge accomplishment for any city council. But winning uh, for what they did in 2020 is truly amazing. And I congratulate all of you. 
So whereas the city of McAllen faced unprecedented challenges in 2020 with the COVID pandemic, the killing of two police officers in one afternoon, which devastated the entire community, and a direct hit from a slow moving hurricane, Hannah, which caused flooding in much of the city, and whereas the city reacted quickly to the unprecedented needs brought about due to a shutdown in Texas and the nation with a multi-pronged plan by promoting online ordering and socially distanced pickup to support local businesses, which were suddenly struggling, funded direct grants to small businesses most impacted by the pandemic, provided 989 Wi-Fi access points to supply internet to 43% of the city and use water towers as transmitters urgently needed to help students who were suddenly thrust into learning with schools closed and work with local partners to organize grab and go meals for students and residents in need as well as senior citizens, which resulted in providing over 2 million meals to those in need and avoided layoffs and furloughs to any city employees and created socially distanced events such as the hugely popular drive through holiday event at the convention center and worked tirelessly to increase weak pandemic affected census participation by hosting census events and even personally operated, lost my place because I got excited, a census participation phone bank. And whereas the city of McAllen has prioritized policy making using citizen input as the foundation of a continual improvement process and ICMA best practice, by the way, which is used to set long-term goals, strategies, and objectives and annual budget prioritization. And whereas the city of McAllen has for years added a drainage component into their formal citizen survey, which led to the city's first comprehensive drainage master plan with a funded source identified for each project and led to overwhelming support of a bond election to fund drainage projects. And whereas even during a global pandemic, the McAllen City Commission accelerated large projects in order to assist the local economy while at the same time ensuring fiscal responsibility and effective budgeting, maintaining a minimum of 140 days of operations in unrestricted funds as required by ordinance. And whereas McAllen has benefited from a harmonious city commission and strong stable city management with the most recent citizen survey rating McAllen officials 49% higher than the Texas average. And whereas your city management team as members of TS TCMA nominated you, the McAllen City Commission for the TCMA 2021 City Council of the Year Award for your outstanding leadership in 2020. And whereas the Texas City Management Association has awarded the McAllen City Commission the 2021 City Council of the Year for the state of Texas, we join the community in congratulating the commission on winning this prestigious award. Therefore, I, Roy Rodriguez, city manager of the city of McAllen, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested in me and on behalf of the assistant city managers, do hereby proclaim the city, uh, McAllen City Commission as the Texas City Management Association's 2020 City Council of the Year. It's a big deal. We got bigger than we've ever gotten before. Let me say, you know, uh, 2020 was a terrible year in a, in a lot of ways. And so this, this makes it a little better. It really does. And thank you. Roy and, and assistant city managers for nominating us, and uh, they, there won't be a raise for this, you know. I'm going to have to tell you, <laughs> but you know, it's great to work with a great team, and that's what we have. It, it takes a great team. We have great city commissioners; they all participate. We don't always agree, but we always listen to each other, and that's the most important part. And come out with uh, decisions that we think are best for our citizens. So, thank you, commissioners. It's been, it's a pleasure to be part of your team, and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sad I'm leaving it. Now I want to stay another year, but it's too late. <laughs> but anyways, thank you for all you do for our citizens. And if you work hard and have fun. Yeah, and as our motto is, you just reminded me, work hard and have fun. That's our motto, and the work showed. 
the work showed this time. It wasn't a lot of fun, but the work showed it. So, but we had fun when we could. So, uh, thank you for all you do on behalf of all the citizens. Appreciate that. And then, of course, if anyone else wants to speak, but lastly, the board will be presenting you the award. This is from our, our city uh, in June. Hopefully, the pandemic will be in a lot better situation. You will be invited to the Texas City Manager Association Conference for this award. Wow, we haven't had one like that in a while, right? Yeah. So, that's really amazing. Okay. We're all settled in now. We're going to go ahead and call a public hearing together for the purposes of hearing recommendations from the McAllen Planning and Zoning Commission. <coughs> Ms. Garcia, would you like to proceed as soon as you go. Yes, sir. So today uh, there is one rezoning under routine. As always, it comes with a favorable recommendation from PNZ. Uh, but if you guys want to discuss it, then we can uh, discuss it separately. And that's an AO to R3A multifamily, is that correct? Yes, sir, on North Jackson. In North Jackson Road. And that's a, uh, anybody have any comments? Not an entertain a motion to approve. So motion moved. check second. Second. <coughs> motion second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Now we have rezonings and item uh, B. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So this is the initial rezoning to R1. Uh, this property is a 10-acre tract located on the east side of North 29th, just south of Russell Road. Uh, it has been part of McAllen's ETJ since uh, 1985. Uh, they are requesting R1 for a 42-lot uh, single-family subdivision uh, that has received final approval from PNZ last Tuesday. Uh, the adjacent zoning is AO to the north, R1 to the east, south, and west. Um, and then land uses are single-family homes as well as the school uh, to the north as well. Uh, the re initial rezoning was heard at April 6th, PNZ. There was no opposition, and it was unanimously recommended approval. I'm just going to ask a dumb question. Does all of this have water, sewer, fire, hydrant, everything? Yes, ma'am. So it's like they, they are water. surrounded by the city, so everything that's not there, the, the uh, developer will put in any way as part of the okay. subdivision. So we process. know that in advance before we get Correct. anybody to yes. rebuttal. Okay, I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, any other questions? Here to entertain a motion for the rezoning of the property. Move. Is motion to approve. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carried. And item C is a public hearing and ordinance providing for the annexation of the same tract. Before we start, I, I would like to, my understanding um, from the uh, planning or assistant city manager, that we didn't make any of the offers of um, incentives that we norm, that we approved from a city commission standpoint. And I think it would be appropriate to offer those incentives because I don't want to not have them do it because they didn't know and the next one comes in and gets the incentive. I think it's the fair thing to do on anybody who wants to annex. Okay. So in, in your, um, we're going to vote on the ordinance to annex, right? Yes, sir. In that, in that, if you could make sure the amendment that incentives oh, okay. that could normally be offered are offered. So it doesn't have to come back a second time. Okay. okay. Well, just to make sure, this is not the one uh, getting a little bit, this is not the one where they agreed to annex with the participation on, well, I, evidently not. Okay. 
right? Correct. No, that, that, no. Okay. Yeah. We'll so move with uh, the conditions as stated by Mayor Darling. Okay. Second. There you go. No second. Anybody, anything else? The applicants here? No, they're, what? Welcome to the city of McAllen where we get fire protection, <laughs> street lights, all the many Fire hydrants, everything. <laughs> as opposed to being out there in um, sewer. Yeah. the county. I'll leave it at that. Okay. So we have motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. The next item is D, amending the zoning ordinance to the city of McAllen for items um, A1 and A B1. Allowed. Second. second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign, motion carry. That's the end of the uh, public hearing. The next item is consent agendas. Any items to be taken off the consent agenda as presented? It's item A through H. A lot of grant applications, actually. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I move to approve. Second. second. A motion and second to approve items 2B, uh, oh, excuse me, yeah, 2A through. H. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, item three, bids and contracts, Mr. City Manager. Yes, sir. We've got an award of contract for the Under Lewis International Bridge northbound lane expansion. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Commissioners, City Manager. Uh, this item is to add an additional northbound lane at Ansel Lewis. The project consists of constructing a lane, if you don't mind. 605 linear feet long to re of reinforced concrete. This project will allow us to begin a new DAP project for a seventh additional lane at the port of entry. And the lowest bidder was J. Peña Construction at a cost of 159104 This project will be paid for 100% by CIP funds. Staff recommends awarding the contract to the lowest bidder. I'll move. Just Second. had one question. Yes, sir. The bids seem to be pretty far apart. I mean, is there a reason why? 159 which is great but all the way to 463 are we sure that everything's included in there it's that it's it's just concrete i'm not sure why the construction came in at 400 over four hundred thousand dollars it's just really just a 607 linear feet of concrete okay it's simple it's real simple we usually see them <laughs> we usually see them bid up a little bit because all their Workers have to be sort of uh, have security oh, clearances, security, if you will, and so if some companies don't can't do that. So we see a little bit higher bid, but not nowhere near what that difference is. Okay, for this one. Yeah. Who was the contractor? Jay Pena. Is that Javier Pena or Juan? Pena? I'm not. Sh it's Jay Pena Construction Ltd. The next one was Morwell LLC, then Celso Gonzalez Construction, and Lugania Construction came afterwards. I think a motion okay. was made. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion and second. All the, right? Okay. I heard that motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. Thank he you. is a water contract to purchase a one current side tractor with heavy duty flail mower. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Commission. My name is Martino Trevino, the Deputy Director of Public Works. Uh, Public Works is requesting approval to award a purchase contract to Deere and Company of Cary, <coughs> North Carolina with TELUS Equipment Solution as a delivering dealer with Wessico, Texas for a John Deere 5090 side, side tractor mower with a heavy duty flail mower for the drainage department of Public Works. Purchase contract will utilize the by board purchasing cooperative with a total unit cost of $73,589.02. So move to approve. Second. Yes. This is one of the ones that we have in the by board. Usually we put them separate. We probably just forgot this, right? Okay, we have a motion and second for approval. Any questions or comments? Fine and second. Here none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. C is a word of contract for the purchase of one current model grade all excavator. Honorable Mayor, City Commission, once again, Public Works is requesting. Approval to award a purchase contract to Great All Industries with Waukesha Pierce Industries as the delivering dealer with Edinburgh, Texas for a Great All Hydraulic Excavator XL4100 for the drainage department of Public Works. Purchase contract will utilize the source well purchasing cooperative with total unit costs of $495,289.12. So moved. Second. Second. Motion is second. Any comments or questions? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. 
Okay. Four A. Uh, I don't have anything to add to the report, Mayor and Commissioners, and we're still awaiting the uh, stimulus funding, and that's something that I want to talk about in future agenda items. So unless there's any questions, uh, I don't have anything on the offer. Investment report. A uh, review of a uh, quarterly investment report is uh, item B for quarter ending December 31, 2020. <clears throat> the item before you is the quarterly investment report. Uh, the report is pre and prepared in accordance with the Public Funds Investment Act and in accordance with city policy as well. The report was presented to the audit committee on March 18, 2021. Page one of the investment report summarizes the city portfolio as of December 31st. The total book value of the portfolio was 298 million with an average yield of 70 basis points. Uh, the last page of the packet uh, will also give you a breakdown per fund and per uh, spending category. Uh, staff recommends approval and I can answer questions as well. Okay, any questions? I move to accept uh, the report. Becca. Motion and second to accept the report is presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. same sign, motion carried. Advisory board, Sperlin. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Commission. This item is for advisory board appointments. I have received nominations from Mayor Darling, from Commissioner Samora, and uh, Commissioner Whitaker. You'll see those uh, nominations on your uh, on your report. Uh, and at this time, I'll take any other nominations that you have for the remainder of the vacancies. Any other nominations? How many openings? I'll check it. Okay, here you got entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. The second approve the nominations as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Motion carried. D, you're up, Perla. Yeah, D is consideration and approval of an order for signature verification committee for the May 1, 2021 general election and special election. Correct. The Mayor and City Commission, um, this item is for a SVC committee. Uh -huh. At this time, we have received a total of 316 applications for a ballot by mail, and uh, we are... Uh, recommending uh, this item as per uh, Texas Election Code 87.027. Uh, um, we can appoint the Signature Verification Committee of no less than five members, and I've also uh, attached that information on your packet and uh, named the five uh, members that we are recommending for the SVC, and we're recommending appointment, uh, approval of that appointment for that committee. Okay. Here's the recommendation. Any questions or comments? Motion to approve. Second. A motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Future right. agenda items. Uh, a couple of things. One is uh, we anticipate having the compensation study uh, final draft uh, ready for next meeting. Uh, we've been meeting almost weekly. We met this morning. We still think we can get there, uh, and we're hoping not to have to push it to the first meeting in May. And then the other is that we need to start planning a, probably a workshop to discuss the stimulus funds. Uh, I don't want to burn money that we don't have yet, but uh, uh, that, that discussion needs to start happening because it, there's going to be a lot of activity that you'll be able to, to discuss. So, Wouldn't that um, be more of like a retreat? Don't you think? Yeah, exactly. It'll be that. at least probably a couple hours to have open discussion. So yeah. that, that would be a good, a good way to do it. We can probably do what we did last time that we're at Quinta. Um, for the yeah. morning. Something like that. So if y'all are okay, we'll start planning a date here soon. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Great. Any other future agenda items besides that? Pretty busy uh, schedule. Um, one thing on the Wi-Fi residential update before we have that meeting, if we could have a report on where we are um, in what neighborhoods and all that so we can have that if, and determine whether we have to have a meeting. For which yeah. neighborhoods for what? Yeah. <coughs> Robert, okay. Good. Not now, but for the next, you know, maybe uh, pass it out before the next meeting of city commissioners so we know where we are. Okay. okay. All right. Any other future agenda items? Can I ask something about that to Wi Fi just real quick? To Robert, or we have to wait till the meeting. Um, it's really supposed to be. I think you turn. Yeah. I didn't hear. You can I'll, ask. I'll just ask later. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, uh, okay. Mayor, on, on future agenda items, um, I'd like for us to, to discuss carports. Um, I've gone through uh, a number of residents that have brought it to my attention that there's um, that the, the city is, is being uh, strict on some and not on others, and there's not a whole lot of understanding of, of um, what the process is and what the requirements are. And so I'd really like that to be a workshop item where we, we figure out what we're doing and if we can make it um, more understanding for the public uh, because uh, I think it's something we really need to take a look at. Okay. Put that, Mr. City Manager. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other items? Hearing none, I'm going to move to um, it's the mayor's report. The first one is um, COVID matters. Uh, first thing is, you know, our numbers are down. Still, any death isn't too many, right? We still have some some deaths, but the hospital and ICU numbers have uh, decreased significantly uh, in relationship to that. And the state numbers, uh, they, we had notice from the state that they asked. For, uh, the, not permission, but agreement to, to um, uh, take the hosp hospital facility out of the convention center, and we agreed to that, and they're supposed to be doing that this week, I think. Is that right, Roy? Yeah, uh, yes, in fact, uh, Jeff was uh, coordinating that uh, right this morning, I think, or this afternoon. And they're a little behind on getting started on the move out, so hopefully we'll get a better idea in the next day or two. Okay. And then um, the subject of uh, vaccinations, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm having trouble finding people that Me need too. to be <laughs> vaccinated or want to be vaccinated. And so I was at um, DHR this afternoon. They're having the same problem over there. And so they were just announcing it. I think some had to do with scheduling, but people just got tired of trying to get, you know, get registered and scheduling and, and, and getting out that news to them is, is difficult. So anything we can do uh, to announce that and get more people vaccinated, we have now the um, uh, Pfizer one, right? That's a one shot. The Johnson, 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 Johnson. I'm sorry, Johnson Johnson one shot. And so, um, when that comes out, people need to be be. Um, and we don't know what we're going to get. None of the entities know what they're going to get until like the week that they get it. So right. just uh, continue to call and get vaccinated. I think that's an important thing. And, uh, we don't want to send any back. Do all of our employees have? been vaccinated already, Roy, or do we something Yes, like uh, every employee that wanted a vaccine has been vaccinated. There's a lot of uh, credit that deserved by emergency management right. and, and all of the team that put that together, but yes. I think we even provided vaccinations to the Border Patrol, uh, CBP, and our CBP for sure. So fire and police, everyone's been? Everybody, yes. Yeah. And so the only thing I'll add to that, Mayor, is that I really do have to applaud the staff because we're having to send out media advisories when we realize that a lot of folks are not showing up and so it's kind of a first come first serve and and they've done really well to where all of the vaccines are administered 30 percent right. aren't showing up yeah that. exactly That's the number i know uh, on the council of governments we had an effort to get all the homebound people through amigo survive and um i'm sure of that i think we 100 percent at least everybody that we knew of that we, uh, we tried to contact got vaccinated so uh, that's great, great um, uh, progress on that. And I might mention then the next one is kind of related to that, and the last one is non-essential travel. You know, we um, our downtown merchants are um, still suffering because we don't have non-essential travel. Um, our hotels and some other uh, businesses are, the mall for sure. And so the rationale for non-essential travel has, has been COVID, and number one. And so number two is we're... Um, we're seeing our numbers down. I don't think it justifies that significantly there. And number three, uh, we asked the county occasionally, I asked last week, was there any, because they do uh, track and tracing, right? Or, and and uh, there is no noticeable COVID-related uh, um, illnesses for people that have essential travel. About 50% of our bridge traffic is essential travel, which have been authorized to come across a bridge now. And we don't see any um, COVID-related activity from traveling to or from Mexico with these essential travelers. So we're trying to get the, the government every um, month, the, about five days before the 21st, they decide whether they're gonna extend that. If it's done for um, health purposes, we don't think it's justified and we need to open that, open the border and help our businesses who've been severely affected anyways. So hopefully you would uh, agree with that. 
And the last thing is on um, border issues, and I'll talk a little bit about that. I won't talk about the respite center because we just got enough news, but still trying to tell our message that it's safe down here, you know, and that you wouldn't know it unless you stood out the bus station when they were people were being dropped off. We've had congressmen and senators and everybody. Um, as first thing I'm surprised at is how um, relatively little they know about it until they actually get down here and see it. I mean, it's just the news media is just not depicting it as it really is. But the second issue I think is important is um, that when they stopped building the wall, the levee system, they stopped building them. And a lot of the walls are built on levee systems. And so they just stopped. And so we have foundations that are um, half dug into the levee system that aren't being finished. The government um, did ask the contractors to do um, assessments and new budgets, if you will, to, fin to finish the levy systems to re make sure they are redone to back to the original condition, even if the wall is not going to be built. Uh, that's been going on for over a month now. It's not been done. We're heading into hurricane season, and I checked today. Uh, it, many of the contractors have lost their workers because they haven't had any work for three months, and so they don't have, even if they said go ahead, they'd have to scramble to get workers. So uh, I've been saying it, and I think Roy's been saying it, and we all need to say it. Um, we need to have the federal government. If you want to stop the wall, that's one thing. We're not involved in that. We don't, we're not involved in border issues on politics, and we're not involved in the wall on politics, except to the extent that they have to go in and repair the levees where they've damaged them for wall construction and halted wall construction. Otherwise, we'll, we need to pray that we don't have a hurricane. That's all I had. <laughs> Anybody got any comments or questions, go ahead. No? Okay, then uh, Mr. City, Man City Attorney on Executive Sessions. Mayor, with respect to item 7A. I oh, I'm sorry. We had one item that was uh, tabled at right. filing. It was withdrawn. I believe it was withdrawn there. Yeah, that was withdrawn, so we need to take it off the table and take it off the agenda. Do have a motion to, to do that? Motion to approve. Second. Yeah, motion to take item 5A off the, uh, off the table and off the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. I'm carried now 7A. Mayor, with respect to the first tract, I would recommend the commission entertain a motion to authorize the city manager or city attorney to extend a lease offer as described in executive session. So moved as stated. Second. Okay, motion second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Mayor, with respect to the second tract, I recommend the city commission entertain a motion to authorize city attorney, city manager, to obtain an appraisal for the property and explore uh, sale and development um, sale and development terms for the property. So moved to set forth by city attorney. Second. And motion second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. It is 548. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. This is what the city commission of the year does. Efficient. <laughs> <laughs> we are now. Adjourn. Thank you very much. Monday of each month. Meetings are rebroadcast on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on the McAllen Cable Network.